Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing a notebook that I really enjoy. Um, this is from Jumping Fox Design and I just wanted to show it in its packaging because I actually really, really like how this notebook comes packaged. So, simple cardboard sleeve, as you can see. Um, nothing on it apart from the label there on the, on the spine. There's actually a nice way to store the book as well, probably. Protected and, you know, archivable and that sort of stuff. You slip that off and it's presented here nicely, sort of in the box, sort of surrounded by a uh, protective cardboard with a nice belly band on it. Um, this is the Tweed Grey Hardcover A5 Notebook with dot grid pages. Really, really nice notebook. So, I'm gonna show you some parts, features, writing sample, and all of that. So here is the Jumping Fox Design A5 Tweed Notebook. As you can see, it's a, uh, I've just clamped off a few pages. I've started using this for a project, planning and scheming beyond COVID-19. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, but it's a really lovely tweed gray cover uh, with sort of a hard spine and Jumping Fox there, on, Jumping Fox design there, uh, embossed foiled on the back and their beautiful little logo, which I just think is absolutely adorable on the front there. It looks great. Um, so elastic band, a couple of bookmarks. I'm gonna go over some of the parts and features. Let's have a look. So it's got these uh, foil edges as well, which is quite nice. Rounded corners, which help protect the book from getting damaged. You know, sort of, they can take a bit more of a bump than a, and show less wear and tear. Plus it's a nice sort of, just a nice detail. Elastic band uh, enclosure, which like isn't the tightest elastic, but I actually don't mind that. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's going to stretch too easy, and I think it should last pretty well. Um, just simple, like, you know, usual sort of way of sort of securing that. I said a couple of ribbons. And when you open it up, there's a space for your personal details, which is a nice thing, a feature that a lot of books have. Um, and then a couple of pages in is a contents page that I haven't started yet so that I could show you just simple page number section down the sides and then space for the information. If we flip to the middle of the book, uh, you can see that it is a dot grid and it's not a super intrusive dot grid. It's a sort of a, uh, it's a, it's a sort of a, a mild gray, uh, but it comes up nicely and it's a ni nice way of guiding you through using the book. Um, giving you freedom, of course, you know, Doc, doc read is very popular amongst bullet journalists, and in a way that's kind of how I'm using this book, uh, is as a bullet journal, pro project bullet journal, um, if you will. Um, it gives you the freedom to be able to write on lines, um, using, if you've got small handwriting, one row of squares, or two if you've got larger handwriting, but also gives you the freedom to do things like tables and graphs, and also just some drawing stuff without being tied into lines or a full grid. Um, but it also gives you the ability to actually, you know, have a bit more structure than blank. Um, one thing you notice is that the book lays pretty flat. Like, it, sometimes it takes a little bit of coaxing, um, but these are sewn um, and sort of glued signatures, which is, you know, very secure, uh, very well made, um, and there's no threat. I've had felt n never felt like turning a page is going to pull a page out or anything like that. It's a, it's the, it's a lovely system, and a system that is used absolutely widely, uh, widely. Um, if we now turn to the back, now, firstly, one thing I should say on the outset right here and now is that the Jumping Fox design notebooks are designed to be high quality items, executive items, nice gift items, mementos, something to last, but they are not designed with the express use of fountain pens and therefore uh, the paper is not fountain pen friendly, say like, um, like a Rhodia paper or a Clairefontaine or something like that. But it is very high quality paper. Let's turn to the back and look at some uh, ink tests here. So I've written in this book with a number of different writing instruments. A Uniball Jetstream ballpoint, a 2B pencil. 2B pencil didn't rub out overly well. Um, that 2B is a quite a soft 2B, but it uh, th there is a texture on this paper. It's got a bit of tooth to it, which is nice for writing. Alami 2000, which you saw, if you wrote, saw the uh, first impressions video, you'll see I wrote in this and see some of how the paper uh, behaves. Then I wanted to test it a little bit. I use the Estabrook JR, which is a medium, but with a quite a wet ink. Then a Platinum Century 70, 3776 with a broad nib with Diamine Oxford Blue, which is once again, quite a saturated ink. Then something like the Pilot Custom 823 with Fire and Ice. And I've also put down like a patch of quite heavy ink. 
Then something a bit more realistic, a Faber-Castell Neo Slim Fine uh, with Faber-Castell Königsblau ink, um, and then a Yucca's felt tip with Diamine Oxford Blue. And then something just really abusive, the Jinhao 992 Fine, but with Noodles Base State Blue, which will eat through fountain pen friendly paper. Then a few other things, a Muji Gel Pen, a Pentel, Pentel Energel, a Zebra Sarasa, a Retro 51 Rollerball, a Sharpie Marker, Pilot Friction, which came off very nicely, and then just for the sake of the exercise, just to see how it would handle it, a Kohenor Watercolour, um, the orange there, uh, which I thought, seeing as though it's a Fox branded notebook, uh, like a nice sort of orangey, foxy colour, would be nice. Let's look at the other side. So, first thing we can see, or firstly, let's just look at that page. On the front page, everything performs nicely. There's no feathering, the colours look nice, there's no sheen, but we do get shading. Like, if you look there on the and and ice of fire and ice, you can see lovely, lovely shading. Um, you know, so you do get shading on the paper, you do not get sheen, but there's no feathering, there's, you know, no spread or anything like that. If we look at the very wet pens, it stays a very nice tight line, which is really nice to see. Even the highlighter, there's no spreading or like smearing or anything like that. This paper does write very nicely. And if we look at the reverse, we do see some things come through. Some of the fountain pens have come through, but as I said, I've used quite, I've tried to test the paper a bit. But if we look where the Neo Slim was, nothing came through. That's a fine everyday writing nib. The Lamy 2000, which is a medium, behaved really well. It's the broads and the really wet inks that have sort of come through here. And the Jin, uh, the Base State Blue uh, there, which in a fine nib has actually performed fairly well. The Yucca's felt tip pen only came through where we pulled the ink uh, and went over itself. And all the you know gel pens and roller balls worked really nicely. Sharpie marker, of course, came through as to be expected, but the watercolor performed and behaved really, really well. Okay, let's. I've now written a few stats and ideas and things about this book. Um, Jumping Fox Design hardcover A5 notebook. It the measurements are 142 millimeters by 210 millimeters, which is a fairly standard A5 size. It has 140 numbered dot grid pages, which are 120 GSM. So it is nice, heavyweight paper. Um, it has a table of contents page, eight perforated pages, as you can see here at the back, perforated pages, which means you can remove pages without destroying your notebook, which is always handy. It's got a pocket in the back. Um, nice expandable pocket, keep you know your bits and pieces in there, plus you know nice little logo in the back there, and a QR code to scan, subscribe, and save. It has the elastic band on the front, and two ribbon bookmarks here in a silver and a black. Um, it's acid-free paper, so there is an archival quality to the paper, uh, which is also very, very great. Now, these books come in two different versions. This is the uh, linen or fabric version with the dot grid, which is at 120, as I said, GSM. It also comes in a, uh, a lined version, which uses 100 GSM paper. And there are lots of different covers and colors and stuff in the fabric linen version like this, and also a leatherette version. Uh, so something for everyone, lots of different colors and, and materials. This is a woman-owned uh, business, and they're proud of that, and, you know, I think that's absolutely wonderful. It's based in California in the USA, and they have a passion for creating high-quality products. As you can see with a book like this, it's well-made. It's got great details, which I love. Um, it's been thought out, and it's really, really well-considered. And even for a book that isn't traditionally fountain pen friendly, you could easily get away with using something like a fine nib or a not overly wet medium nib uh, for your everyday writing. I think a book like this is really good for bullet journaling, um, and we're gonna do a live writing sample in just a second, uh, but I wanted to just cover a few of these things first. Um, while we're here, let's talk about the price. So this book you can buy through Jumping Fox, or and through their website, it links to the Amazon selling page. Uh, That's Amazon USA. And the price is, for this particular one, is $17.95 US. Uh, and for the Line 100 GSM version, it's $14.95. So pretty well priced, uh, especially seeing as though it isn't a hugely mass-produced item. It's not like it's, yeah, a Rodeo web notebook or something like that or a Leuchtturm. And it's priced really fairly. 
uh, and you do get a lovely product. And as I said, the packaging, just that quality of that is, is really nice. Let's do a live writing sample now. I'm gonna use two, uh, two pens here. A Faber-Castell fountain pen with a fine nib. This is the uh, Faber-Castell Hexo, new, relatively new pen, new on the Australian market. And then the Hexo uh, ballpoint pen. Um, so I'm just gonna really just, I'm, we'll have to try and see it through this page. I'll write it in a space where there's not too much going on. So we have the Faber-Castell. Hexo fountain pen, and that's a fine. Uh, and that's just Faber Castell Schwarz or black uh, ink. Um, you know, not it's not like super super absorbent paper. The ink does take a few seconds to dry, which is also actually kind of nice. Actually, let's just put down like a nice little dollop of ink there, just nice. Let's see what happens with that. Uh, and then with the the ballpoint. ballpoint uh, and that's I would put broad because that's what bold because that's what the delineation of this um, refill is once again it's a tiny bit of smear that's more the ink but as you can see like it's not super absorbent paper um, and like I think the paper handles nicely it's got a little bit of tooth as I said like it's not super smooth it's not super coated um, so you do feel yourself writing on the page but if we look over the page here where we did the writing sample you can see from that fine nib uh, we didn't get any bleed through or anything so it is nice paper um, and though not traditionally fountain pen friendly I think it actually stands up to like non-abusive use Let's talk pros and cons now. Um, we'll start with the cons. As I said, it's not 100% fountain pen friendly. If you're using big, wet, broad nibs and stub nibs and flex pens, this is not going to be the notebook for you. It is not designed to be that. Um, so, you know, look at um, notebooks from other brands if that is what you're needing. Um, right now, it is a limited distribution through Amazon USA, which does mean that getting it to some places will be tricky, particularly like right now as this is being filmed in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but, you know, I I really think that these books will get a bit more distribution. They'll start to, they're a relatively new company. They will get some more, they'll build a bit of momentum and I think that's going to be really great. Um, the other thing is because it is a linen style cover, you do get little scuff marks. Like I've been using this now for like consistently for just over a week um, and everything's holding up like it's got a nice build quality you know nothing's nothing is coming unglued or you know starting to fray or anything like that there's enough of a hangover on the pages to protect uh, all the corners there's just a few little like scuff marks and stuff like on the foiling there uh, and then just like on the corners of the pages uh, because it's life and this is a like you get little scuff marks you can you can't clean it off, it's not like it's a plastic cover. Um, so if it picks up something, it picks up something. Put it down on a table that's got something on it, it's gonna get it. And that's absolutely fine. That's, you know, and it's a, these are living, <laughs> living use items and you do, they do pick up your life with them. But the pros of this are really nice. As I said, simple, clean design. It's not reinventing anything. It's just being done in a really nice way. It has good features, um, like you know all the standard features you would expect: elastics, ribbons, expandable pockets, perforated pages, numbers, table of contents, all of those sorts of things. Um, excellent packaging, as I showed at the start of the video. It's so nicely presented when you take it out of that sleeve and it's sitting there with that border of cardboard around it, sitting there nicely protected. It's a nice feeling to receive something like that. They're a company who cares. They care about their products. They want your feedback. They want to know how you're using them. They want you to engage on social media. Like, they're not a big conglomerate. This is a small, as I said, woman-owned business. Uh, and it's like, should be, should be absolutely sort of encouraged and supported. They're, they're lovely and they're so nice to deal with. Um, it lays pretty flat. Like, you sometimes, as I said, sometimes you have to coax it, but it will lay flat. Like, that spine bends back, doesn't bend back on itself, but it sort of like clears out of the way to allow you to have the book sitting pretty flat. 
um, as well as good features, it has nice details. Now, these are things that, like, I enjoy. So the foiled edges just adds a little touch of class. The corners being rounded, once again, it's a nice look, but it's protective of the book. Uh, and the material of the cover, I just love. I'm a big tweed guy. Like, I love, I really enjoy tweed, and I really like grey. Uh, and so to, a tweed grey is, like, my dream. Um, and this material is really nice. It's fine, so it's got a nice texture to it. Uh, but, you know, once you get the embossing and stuff on it, it's, it just looks nice and feels nice. And then, of course, the last point is, is that it's really well priced. At $17.95 US, you are not paying an exorbitant amount for this notebook. I think it fits nicely in uh, the market. Uh, and as they are able to introduce more products and, uh, you know, larger uh, uh, collections of things, I think they're going to be a company worth looking out for because they care, and that is important. They care about the products, they care about their customers. Uh, and as I said, they're just such lovely people to deal with. I've had really nice, um, you know, sort of dealings with them and correspondence over the last little while, and it's been really nice. So this was the Jumping Fox Design A5 hardcover tweed gray notebook. Check them out, look at them on Amazon, look at their website, find a notebook that uh, suits you and why not give it a try? As I said, not 100% fountain pen friendly, but not designed to be, holds up to 90% of stuff really, really well. And if you're using something like, you know, a fairly standard fine nib or medium nib, I don't think you're gonna have a problem. So thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email which is listed down below. Um, if you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, just like Jumping Fox Design did here, I would really love to hear from you. It's your support that makes this channel possible. So, thank you for watching. Enjoy your pens, enjoy your notebooks, and I'll talk to you soon.